Hello, I'm Andre Bugram from Silver Beach Analytics, and today I'm going to talk about our work on the functional characterization of disease embeddings learned from the analysis of massive medical records. In this work, we are investigating properties of recently developed embeddings of medical terms available in the qe 2 vec resource and determine whether they allow inferring functionally meaningful disease clusters and whether they can be used in prediction of novel gene disease associations. QE2VEC resource was developed by a team at Harvard University by analyzing massive amounts of medical documents, such as electronic health records, medical notes, insurance claims, and medical papers. A word embedding algorithm was employed to generate embeddings of over 100,000 medical terms into the 500-dimensional vector space. We have analyzed embeddings of selected terms for over 3,500 human diseases for which gene disease associations are available in this GeneNet database. Our first question was, do diseases form meaningful clusters in the embedding space from which disease types could be reconstructed? We defined a measure of disease similarity as the cosine between embedding vectors and performed hierarchical clustering of the resulting disease-disease distance matrix. The results of this clustering are shown here. We have identified 31 disease clusters that are well aligned with top disease categories from MESH. This indicates that disease categories naturally emerge from patterns in the embedding space. Next, we turned our attention to gene embedding and functional characterization of disease clusters. Genes were embedded into the same 500-dimensional vector space by leveraging disease embeddings from qe 2 vec and annotated gene disease associations from this genetic database. The details of gene embedding procedure are shown here. To each disease cluster, we attributed a set of genes whose embeddings are most closely aligned in vector space with diseases in the cluster. Resulting cluster-associated gene sets were characterized using pathways from Reactom. Again, we can see that biologically meaningful results emerge from such analysis. For example, by analyzing genes that are aligned with cluster number 26, we see that all top pathways are associated with fibrin clot formation and closely related processes. Incidentally, many diseases in this cluster are related to thrombosis as well as conditions resulting from it such as embolism and arterial stenosis. Moreover, we can see that embedding-based analysis of genes results in sets that are more specific and closely related to the common etiology of diseases in corresponding clusters when compared to the sets of all genes that are annotated to cluster diseases. This observation points to the possibility of using gene disease co-embedding as a tool for evaluating annotated gene disease associations and predicting novel associations. To verify this, we designed an algorithm for scoring observed and putative gene disease associations. For a gene disease association of interest, the score is computed by integrating evidence of associations from similar diseases in proportion to their similarity to the disease in question. This score then can be used as a classifier to predict novel gene disease associations. Overall, this approach yielded fairly accurate predictions of known associations for the majority of diseases, with the area under the curve of 0.9. Uh, to demonstrate utility of this approach in drug target identification, we can look at the detailed predictions of genes associated with pulmonary embolism. For example, matrix metalloproteinase MMP9 has no direct association with this disease, but its relation to embolism could be predicted from MMP associations with aneurysm and myocardial infarction, which co-cluster with pulmonary embolism in the embedding space. As MMP9 plays a role in smooth muscle cells migration and vascular remodeling, its likely mechanistic connection to pulmonary embolism is mediation of its consequences such as vasculopathy and right ventricular failure. The latter was confirmed in animal models where inhibition of MMP9 was shown to attenuate consequences of pulmonary embolism. Taken together, known and predicted associated genes allow reconstruction of a more complete and functionally informative disease network for pulmonary embolism, as shown here. In summary, our findings indicate that disease embeddings generated from massive health-related data can be used to identify disease groups that are closely aligned with known disease classes 
and also to find unexpected connections between diseases from different classes. Disease embeddings could also be combined with annotated knowledge bases to reveal common mechanisms underlying disease types. Finally, they can be used to predict latent gene disease associations and novel drug targets. Importantly, our methods should allow making such predictions for conditions with no known associated genes, such as rare and orphan diseases. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.